is so fetch. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Kaya and today we are going to be listening to the Brazilian heavy metal band Sepultura and I'm very excited, looking forward to it. This is our poll winner from last week and uh, here we are. We're going to do a five song discography dive. So buckle up boys and girls. We're doing uh, five different songs off of like three different albums. So I think three or four different albums. So it's going to be a fun time. I'm very excited. Y'all have been wanting Sepultura on the channel for a while and we haven't listened to Brazilian metal yet. So it's going to be a new experience. Before we get into the video, if you want to subscribe to the channel, please feel free to do so. I post weekly videos and uh, you can join our Discord down below. It's called The Mosh Pit. And uh, like sharing the video. Let me know in the comments down below stuff about Sepultura. Uh, I really just know that they're from the 80s and they're from Brazil and uh that's what we got so let's get into the video Ooh. got some tribal drums slow fade about to be s oh Obviously, but that's kind of what it sounds like. Very interesting drum sound. I, I'm wondering if it's like, if that's like something that actually sounds like that, or if it's a drum with like a lot of like reverb and some sort of like effect to it. Oh, 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 oh. shown a real good time. I like that it's um it's from the 80s so um one of y'all commented and said that a lot of metal albums um her stripped like stripped down to just like their bare instruments basically. Not all of them but a lot of them to just like get that kind of live experience and that's what I feel like this is emulating is sort of that like live instrument sort of experience um a lot of drive punchy good old school heavy metal we lack her Wow. 
their first song. Really strong opener. Very simple in its design. Dang. Nice. Good opener. You know? There were some, like, technical things that they were doing. I like the stops and, like, some of the transitions sort of in the end. And that little guitar solo that they did. And they had a delicious transition there sort of in the end. I'm getting a lot of, like, um, Dying Fetus mixed with, like, Megadeth, sort of. He's doing the, like, chunkier sort of vocals. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I sound like a seal. But, you know, the chunkier vocals that um, the singer for Dying Fetus was kind of doing, in their at least in their first pro uh, project. And then with the sound and, like, the, the old school heavy metal, thrash metal sound of, you know, Megadeth and a little bit of, like, Slayer in there, I'm into it. It's really hot in my house. I have no AC and it's, like, North Carolina summertime right now. So if you hear heavy panting, it's my dogs. <laughs> Ooh, that's their album cover. Oh, wait, we're gonna look at this. Nice. Oh, and it's like Satan and like these little ghosts and the, the snake is there. And they're on the cross, so there's Jesus. Wow, look at this logo. It's it's like saber teeth or something like that. Definitely giving me like Metallica Megadeth vibes with the logo. Ew. All right, and yeah, this reminds me of Dying Fetuses' um, grotesque. What was it? Impalement or something like that, I think is what it was called. It reminds me of I, that album, if I'm if I'm correct in that sort of, if, if that album is the one with the the stalactite mites, cave people, you know, the things. No notes on this song. Love that. Nothing! Man! Uh, total eclipse hides the earth. The night of doom has come. Antichrist soldiers are proclaimed to send souls to the hell. Catastrophe and destruction. Mankind is slaughtered without mercy. Sulfur clouds are in the air. Legions whine. Winds corrode the universe. Goodness. So on this album, Max, Igor, and Gyro guitar, lead, and he did bass, drums, vocals, rhythm, lyrics, and songwriting. So Max mostly did the songwriting. Additional notes. First press with black and white labels. Original pressings of the album feature the first movement of Carmina Burana. Carmina Burana. Um... Paolo Jr. is credited as bassist on the album, but didn't actually record the bass. The bass was actually recorded by Gyro Gwitz. I'm mispronouncing the name, I know. Recorded and mixed in seven days on 16 tracks at a studio, vice versa, in Brazil, August 1986. Yeah, it sounds very, like, simplified and just, like, just simple. That's pretty much what I got. <laughs> so, okay. All right. Great. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Um, what other, um, what other bands from Brazil, metal bands from Brazil do you like? Are there any other ones? I'm assuming there are. Do they, are they in the league of, um, Sepultura or nah? Is it kind of just like just Sepultura? Because sometimes it'd be like that. So now we're moving on to 89. So we're going three years later to Beneath the Remains. And we're going to listen to the title track, Beneath the Remains. I have a fruit fly circling my face. Very rude. 
I was performing a show the other night and a mosquito bit me on my chin. Oh, it was very sad. I'm kind of allergic to mosquitoes, but like, we didn't swell up. Ooh, look at this album cover with the roses. Ooh, I bet somebody's got a tattoo of that on their body. I just bet. Ooh. Oh, this is like Morbid Angel. is better I'm assuming at this point maybe they've already signed to a label so they got into a little bit of a better studio um, instrumental y'all already know I am a sucker for acoustic guitars I didn't feel tears this time but that doesn't mean that um, they won't come later okay beautiful opener beautiful album cover uh, in his voice is definitely higher in the mix it sounds really good Everything else is, is layered nicely, um, and I love that they like have this beautiful intro, pause, smacking in the face with this this good heavy metal thrash. So I'm here for it. <laughs> transitions timing wise they're just it's like <laughs> there's so many transitions I'm getting Slayer vibes too definitely definitely getting Slayer Megadeth a little bit of dying fetus I'm a happy girl <laughs> Wow. Wow. Oh. 
push up. The solo too is also really interesting. Did some like, it's kind of this like funky little thing where he was kind of just playing some random notes it felt like to, to add to the, the vibe of just this, I don't know, craziness. <laughs> and then he goes into the actual solo, which just is a great resolve. Mmm. <laughs> Alright, Sepultura. Alright. <laughs> sort of sound effect. That high pitched like guitar note and then they fade it with like the ooh. Ooh. What are people saying? Commas are turned off. Sepultura. Okay, so they're assigned to Roadrunner. Nothing on this song either. Man, how can y'all not have anything on this one? In the middle of a war that was not started by me. Deep depression of the nuclear remains. I've never thought it, I've never thought about it. It's happening to me. pro lifetarians of ignorance. Orders that stand to destroy battlefields and slaughter. Now they mean my home and work. Who is one who has died? I love that chorus. Who, who, who has won? Who wins when everything is destroyed after a nuclear holocaust? True. Good question. Really good question. Cities in ruins, bodies packed on minefields, neurotic game of life and death. Now I can feel the end, premonition about my final hour. A sad image of everything, everything so real beneath the remains. Yep, definitely getting some mega death vibes. They love to talk about war, aliens, and the things of the sort, and this is so different. I feel like I definitely am getting those vibes. Old school heavy metal thrash. They're delivering. They're definitely delivering, and they had some really tight changes in this song that just like keeps you on your toes, <laughs> you know? And uh, that's what I love about it. It's definitely, like his vocals are reminding me a lot of like Slayer, the transitions are reminding me a lot of Megadeth, same with like the context of the song. Um, less dying fetus vibes, he's definitely doing a little bit more, you know, vocal similar to that of like Slayer and um, Megadeth. All right. Dang. And I just, I love this album cover. Oh, it's sick. It's absolutely sick. And I love that. They, I think that's like a snake head sticking out of the skull. That's a beautiful drawing. And I bet you there's some like 
dank tattoos <laughs> of like people copying that. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> so that was 89. So now we're going to a very popular album as requested by y'all, Arise, which was released in 1991. And the first song, well first let's look at the track list. I want to go in order. So it does start with a rise and then it goes to dead embryonic cells. Ooh, do these two go together? Oh crap. I'm not prepared. Oh no. Okay, great. So, okay. So this one is considered death metal. This record arise. Great. So these two songs go into each other, I'm assuming. Either way, if they don't, that's perfectly fine. But both Arise and Dead Embryonic Cells from the 1991 album Arise were like so heavily requested by y'all. So let's listen to this. Oh my gosh, this is so old. <laughs> 1991. Let's go. I'm here for it. Ooh. Definitely got some some tribal. So much hair. I love that he like sings the lyric and it's like but the lyrics we shall arise good thrash good thrash good sing-along kind of chorus it's cool to like see what they actually look like and they all got hair so much hair and uh, the dude on the cross is wearing a gas mask section wonderful I love a good drum fill into different sections delicious and they have the same sort of like vocal repeating effect um, I forget the word that he was saying but oh yeah it's like I see the world dead dead as uh, as we had in um, beneath the remains I think is what it was that we just listened to Thank 
like a single like the record label pushed that as a single I could listen to a lot more of that they're giving us all of the like the good stuff you know the head bangy stuff they're giving us some delicious guitar solos good drum fills just good head banging like mosh pit opener mmm delicious it's really good it's really really good um, Definitely one thing I'm noticing is that they're very, they're, they're technical. They have like different transitions and stuff like that that they're doing. And um, I, could, I could definitely use more of this song. Oh, here we go. What have the artists said about the song? From the musical point of view, this song sounds a lot like the Beneath the Remains album. It has the same speed as most of the songs, but it also shows some more hardcore influences. The lyrics of Arise are really up to date because it's about how people are ready to kill other people just because they believe in a different kind of God. I think that my voice sounds especially aggressive on this song a lot like on our older albums. Yeah, I would say it sounds really aggressive. I would say that y'all definitely are hitting this song really hard. And it's it's relentless. She just she hits the pavement, she keeps running. Um I love this album cover. All right, so I just wanted to see what the music video was. So I'm going to back up after we are done with these lyrics, I'm going to back up to like the last like 20 seconds of Arise and see if they connect to Dead Embryonic Cells and how that looks. I see the world old, I see the world dead. Seeing the world off after the apocalypse, it would appear old and dead. Victims of war seeking some salvation. The few who survived only wish of death. They have nothing left. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Makes me think of the book of Eli. Face the enemy, manic thoughts. Even if we were able to face the enemy and resolve the conflict, these maniac thoughts aren't helpful, much like religious belief. There's no perfect answer, and the real problems in life are never solved. So is this a song about, like, a nuclear war based on, like, people battling each other for, like, their religious thoughts? That kind of seems like it's, like, a war of religion, but yet the, like, war, the world ends. Max is starting the song by saying that not, that apocalypse has just occurred. Not specifically saying nuclear warfare, but alluding to it by saying cities fall in ruin. And nobody really knows why we all must die. He later mentions there was a terrorist confrontation that could have spurred this event. Ooh, scary. If you know more about what he's talking about, let me know in the comments. <coughs> That's scary though, we don't like that. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. Nope, not after what happened at Ariana Grande's concert in England. I think it was England. Um, where a bunch of little kids died, dude. And then what happened to Pantera's guitarist? Okay, no, sir, no, uh-uh. We need to have better checks and security at these shows, okay? We can't be losing these genius musicians, okay? Can you just imagine what life would be like if we still had dime? All right, so we're gonna check out Dead Embryonic Cells, which I already tells I can already tell it's gonna be a banger. But we're going to listen to the last 20 seconds of Arise. I just want to see if it, um, 
if it goes into that song. Oh, so we don't, so it doesn't transition immediately, but it goes right into these, like, metal hits. Ooh. Similar to how it, the rise began. Or no, same to... No, it's the same beginning as, um... Is it the same beginning as... Hold on. Yeah, it's the same beginning as the rise ish. But it's just got more percussion to it. Beautiful, love it. Bent, little section, bent, and then we go. Slaps, slap station. did was really nice it wasn't drum fill but he did like double bass and then he he flirted with it he like sprinkled it in he was like da -da, da -da, da -da, something like that right after it ew i'm a little overwhelmed i'm overwhelmed there's a lot that's going on um but i'm happy uh this is groovy this whole song is groovy. The drums that he's doing are just bouncy. Bouncy. Cells, dude. I could just imagine like the mosh pit, like following that along. If you had a big enough audience, it would look like an ocean. 
Please tell me you've seen Sepultura live. Sepultura live. the layers they're so good with these transitions that little solo was like he was exploring and then I love how they had a little fill like just a boom bat and then some cymbal taps boom bat cymbal taps perfect transition and then they kind of like open this pit almost slow twerky pit this is like slow twerk mmm Groovy. Ooh. Catchy. Oh. There you go. That's it. My God. What a song. What a song. Spooner's just heavily panting and staring at me behind the camera. Spooner, go lay down. Go lay down. I don't want you to stare at me the whole time I'm filming. I just need a break. I need a second. Uh... This song slaps. Groovy. Beautiful guitar solo. This ending was really nice with the, um, super nice. With, they did like one lower harmony of the solo and then they like did a higher one and panned over here. Delicious. Um, transitions. Gorgeous. Love it. Here for it. I think that's my favorite song off the album. Dead embryonic cell sepultura. What is this about? Is this about abortion? Nothing on this one. Produced by Sepultura and Scott Burns. Who's this? Oh. This dude looks cool. Is an American computer engineer and ex music producer of death metal music. Resident and Morris Sound Recording Studio in Tampa. Ex produ music producer of death metal. <gasps> he produced many records for famous death metal bands, including Death, Deicide, Cannibal Corpse, Obituary, Suffocation. He retired from music industry and works as a computer programmer. Boring. Why? Uh, what? <laughs> What, did you get tired? Did you have, like, some neck injury from thrashing too hard? <gasps> he worked on Hammer Smashed Face? 
I come blood, fucked with a knife. Damn, he worked on a ton of stuff of Cannibal Corpse. Ooh, what a score for uh, Sepultura. I wonder if this is their first time working with this dude. If it is, I bet they were so stoked. I bet they were like, yo, bro, this dude's worked on with Cannibal Corpse. Although I think these albums are both, they're after. I think they're after this record because this one came out in 1991. So it's probably more like the opposite. Cannibal Corpse was probably like, yo, they, this dude worked with Sepultura. <laughs> and Death, dang. I mean, that must have been so freaking cool. Sepultura, Death. Man, he worked on everything of Death. Here's Deicide. Obituary. Napalm Death. Dang. And you're a computer programmer. What a square. All right. You're a square. You're probably a very nice guy, but you're still a square. Land of Anger. I didn't ask to be born. Dang it, genius. Sadness, sorrow, everything's so alone. Laboratory sickness infant infects humanity. No hope for cure. Die by technology bars a world full of shit coming down travel violence everywhere life in the age of terrorism we spit in your other face other face we're dead embryonic cells embryonic cells or stem cells are those spooner do not knock my lights over Embryonic cells or stem cells are those found in a woman's uterus and are the building blocks of all human life. Lyrics are stating that in a world with so much turmoil and so little hope, we are essentially born dead. Hmm. We're born with pain, suffer remains. We're born with pain, suffer remains. We're dead. Here's what they have to say about the song. You can compare the song to Inner Self from Beneath the Remains. It starts real slow and menacing, but Dead Embryonic Cells has a lot more changes than Inner Self. The lyrics are about how the current, but also the future generations, are born in a dead world, a world ruined by their own ancestors that lived generations before them. Andreas Kisser does one of his typical psychedelic guitar tunes, like the one he did for Mass Hypnosis on the previous album. Interesting. I like this Arise intro session. Orgasmatron, criminals in uniform. Interesting. Vocals and lyricist. So it says the main lyricist is Max. Andreas Kisser, lead guitar. What a great name. I wonder if he, like, changed it. Gloria, manager. All right. Recorded in Tampa, Florida. A freaking chorus. Spooner, stop moving my damn light, boy. Nice. All right. All right. Great. Good to know. Dead Embryonic Cells, I think you're one of the strongest ones on this list for me. You got to work with, I think his name is what, Scott Burns? Yeah, super cool. All right, we got one final song. Can you guess which one it is? <laughs> this one is also the most heavily requested song by y'all out of all of these. Next to Arise, Roots, Bloody Roots. From 1996, it's off of the album The Roots of Sepultura. So we are going five years later. This one is apparently a masterpiece. So y'all say. And there is a video, so we're going to watch it. It's got a mask that looks oddly like Slipknot. Don't hurt me for saying that. 
Suffering should be wow with this font. Oh, whoa, whoa. Is this the original from 95? My god. Woo! Suffering should be creative, should give birth to something good and lovely. Read it. Okay. Tribal drums, tribal, I don't know, bongo drums, fire, fire, great, love it, here for it. This one is absolutely heavier than any of the other songs that we've listened to, for sure. Definitely in terms of like vocal, mm, he's given us, he's given us some more grit. And I love that in the music video, they're showing more of their culture and like country, um, I think. It seems like it. We don't need to drag. It's all we wanna bring. Watch me. Oh, look at his death tone shirt. Nice. I said we're going every day. It's wow. too. I love that vocal effect that he has. It's like a megaphone sort of effect. There, so this is obviously a single for their record. And it, it, it's got the layout of, of a single, of a like commercial sort of style single. Very different than the other songs that we listened to. Definitely more of a bop, a metal bop. It's very punchy, it's drivey, the chorus is catchy, like, they're definitely, they're hitting, they're hitting the marks here. They're like, okay, this is going to be a really punchy commercial single. Um, I love it, the whole vibe of it, and his hair with these, like, neck tattoos, and the drums, just, ooh, this is my favorite song.
listen to this section again. I'm pausing it though because <sighs> this sounds divine. <laughs> And he's about to give us the scream. There was also this little drum thing that they did with like a ton of reverb. I have chills. I don't know what's going on. But I'm, I'm so happy. This is so much different. What an evolution of sound. Okay. We're going to rewind a little bit. We're gonna get to this this breakdown that they're about to serve us. Okay. Do the hits. Hit opener right here, dude. Fuck it. Favorite song. Absolute favorite song. Banger. Solid. Sold. Love it. That's the best song out of the five. Easy for me. Easy. Roots, bloody roots. That's a song I could see myself working out to, breaking shit to. Like when I'm angry and some Karens cut me off while I'm driving. Mm, turn this on. Absolutely. I understand that you are hot. Okay? I understand. Uh, roots, bloody roots, easy fave, beautiful, love it, tasty, love it. I don't need, I don't need anything else in my life, honestly. Um, but like we do all the other songs, we're going to look at the lyrics. I want to see more, I want to read more about this. So we're going to go to Roots. Why are you panting on me? He's literally panting right on my arm and drooling on my leg. What? I'm doing a video. I'm almost on, babe. I'm sorry. Roots, Bloody Roots is the first track and single. Look, now we got freaking notes. Single on Sepultura's Ross Robinson's produced sixth album Roots. the track is mid-paced groove metal song that features dissonant guitar leads influenced by new metal bands such as corn yep definitely got some corn vibes who were also famously produced by ross robinson okay so they dropped scott whatever his name was man you dropped the freaking legend himself producer and swapped it for this i mean this dude's also a legend too Corn's pretty good and covered the song at Monsters of Rock 2013. Rhythms influenced by traditional Brazilian folk music. I freaking love it. Lyrically, the song focuses on the preservation of Brazilian culture and getting in touch with one's roots. The song has remained one of Sepultura's most popular and has appeared on all of their live albums with the exception of Under Siege which was released before Roots. Two demo versions of the song have been released, one close to the original and included on the deluxe edition of Roots, and another released by Gloria Cavalera, who's Max's wife. Oh, your wife manages your band? I was wondering who Gloria was. Because I was like, oh, cool, like a woman manager for a metal band? Like, that seems... I mean, great, you know, obviously, but it, I, I don't know. I just feel like that's an interesting thing. But it's his wife. All right, all right. Hopefully that works out. Um, I'm assuming it does. Uh, the latter version features a noisier, more industrial sound, similar to Max's industrial metal side project, Nail Bomb. Do you guys know Nail Bomb? Uh, two megawatt mixes of the song were also released, the first showing a larger focus on Brazilian percussion, and the second being a calmer, more abstract remix. Ooh. Oh my god, go! Jesus Christ. The video shows several aspects of Brazilian culture, such as tribal drummers and 
Perry of Fighters. It won Kerrang's Video of the Year Award in 96. Ooh, yeah, so here's a fun fact. It says, in the music video, Max Cavalera, I have slobber on my arm, sorry. <laughs> Max Cavalera wears a Deftones t-shirt on the Deftones second album, Around the Fur. Max guests on a song called Head Up, where Max and Chino Marino vent their anger at the death of Max's steps on Dana, a.k.a. D-Lo. Man! Y'all always gotta get me with these surprise deaths, dude. Your stepson died? <laughs> Dana's death in the aftermath was the catalyst behind Max leaving Sepultura. Chino would later appear on Max's new band, Soulfly's second album, Primitive, on a similarly themed song, Pain. So I'm guessing they... We can actually just look it up. Yeah, so his son died, his stepson died, and then they replaced Max with Derek Green, which says 1998 to present. Paolo Jr. bass is still original guitars with Andreas Kisser is still original. They did swap drummers, it looks like, drums and percussion from 2011 to present. So they lost the original singer and the drummer since 1986, 87. Dang. That's the current lineup, complete lineup, past members. Bass in 84. So now y'all said that don't listen to anything after Roots. Some of you said no nothing after Chaos AD, but then we just listened to Roots. <laughs> we listened to Roots, Bloody Roots. So, oh, did we? No. Yeah, okay, you know, Chaos AD, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, I'm confused. Okay, I'm sorry, I got all of that wrong. <laughs> this is a little hard to read, <laughs> sorry. So, Roots, Bloody Roots is from Chaos AD, so it says from 93. Then why does it say on here the Roots of Sepultura, 1996? It's not from that album, is it? I don't know. Maybe it's just featured on an EP, maybe that's an EP or something, I don't know. Y'all have to let me know, Metal, Metal Archives says it's from 1993, so it's from Chaos AD because y'all said that anything after Chaos AD is where they went downhill. If you don't agree with that, by all means, let me know. <laughs> but it definitely seems like um, like things changed. The sound is already extremely different in this uh, song, Roots, Bloody Roots, than obviously what they did in 86, which it's like, you know, the sound, it would be a shame if a band didn't evolve and, ch and change somewhat and at least get better in that amount of time. But they're definitely experimenting more with like new metal and and more commercial sounding things. Definitely got a lot more corn influences for sure and Slipknot influences in Roots Bloody Roots, but man is that song a banger and uh, good on them, you know. Um, and also with the death of uh, Max's stepson and him stepping away, they had to replace the singer. Seems like they replaced the drummer 
um, after they released this Roots EP, I'm guessing is what it is. So against in 1998 is when I'm assuming they would have the new singer and the new drummer, which is when they would have probably started to fall off. And if they are following along the trends with working with the same producer for those records, um, obviously they're not, I would assume they're not working with the same dude, Scott Barnes, um, who did their previous records before Chaos AD, then their sound is going to change, um, which is fine, but it can also be not fine for some people. And it sounds like by y'all's um, reactions that it was not fine. <laughs> so um, again, if I'm wrong and you disagree with that, let us know in the comments, you know, because I'm always always here just to have a conversation about music and just learn about all of these different things so no tea no shade i'm here with no opinion just here with questions i definitely think roots bloody roots is my favorite song out of these five um with dead embryonic cells trailing just a little bit i really liked the classic thrash metal vibe of arise and um troops of doom too just a really good old school heavy metal thrash band. It's really cool to see their evolution. I think this is one of the first, the only band that we've had on this channel where the evolution of their sound seems to be so drastic because like Troops of Doom, I mean 86, but the sound of, of their music is that of Slayer mega death a little bit of cannibal corpse you know obviously they're working with a producer that worked on all of those bands basically except for mega death um and then for their sound with roots bloody roots to be totally new metal corn sound again working with a producer that did with corn whether or not those producers had that much influence on the music is debatable you reverse sneezing over there? My dogs are ready to go to the park. I'm going to leave it at that. This is one of the first bands that I've, I've noticed a drastic change. And I would say it's a drastic change in their sound. Um, but I really liked the traditional Brazilian folk drums that were featured in Roots Bloody Roots. Very different than what we heard in the 80s and the early 90s. I mean, I guess Roots, Bloody Roots is early 90s, but basically from 86. Y'all get it. I'm going to stop talking. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for being here and watching this video. Uh, Sepultra, you guys, tell me more down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, go join the Discord, the Mosh Pit down below. Send me more music recommendations through the channel. Email in the description. And... I will see you very soon. Like always, have a wonderful rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, night, wherever you are and whenever you're watching this. I love you. Bye.